Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Meteor 65 HD. Yeah, inside that canopy is an HD camera. And you might know that I love micros. Micro quads allow me to stay comfortable in my house and fly around and have fun. Or I could pop out back and fly as big as four inch quads out there. Four inches is about as big as I get. So I have a tendency to like a lot of micros. But is this micro for you? Let's go and find out. We got Beta FPV 0802 SE 22,000 KV motors. Beta FPV 31 millimeter tri-bladed props. Description on the all-in-one flight controller is relatively generic on the Beta FPV site. Just simply says F4 all-in-one 1S brushless flight controller. Camera specs a Beta FPV Nano HD camera. Hmm. We'll take it apart and look at it later. Of course, the all-in-one board has your receiver built into it. The VTX is 25 milliwatts, but if you look at the VTX tables in Betaflight, it says 500. It's 25 milliwatts. These new Beta FPV canopies are nice and hard. It comes with a complete set of extra props, but I lost a few, and another camera mount. It screws up in there to the canopy. It comes with an extra canopy. It comes with a screwdriver. It comes with two Beta FPV 300 milliamp 1S batteries with the BT20 connector, which matches up to the quad, of course, and a PH20 to BT20 connector for your charging purposes. You also get a support card, and it does come in this nice little box. It weighs 27 and a quarter grams. I flew it on the GNB350 that I converted to BT20 and the Tiny Whoop 333 battery that it comes stock. BT20. With the Tiny Whoop 333 battery, it weighs 35 and a quarter grams. With the GNB 350, it weighs almost 36 grams. I have to interrupt the video. I've actually already done this video. I've recorded it. I've rendered it. I've gone back to it. Uh, I'm still wearing the same messy hair that I started out with. Sorry, I just got a haircut this evening. I rendered this video and it went so fast and I have one person to thank for that. I have many people to thank, but I have one person to thank for the particular PC that I got and that's Mr. Matt, uh, Mr. Matt S. You know who you are, sir, and I want to send out a special thank you to you because if it hadn't been for your efforts and your knowledge and your expertise, I probably would have ended up with a lesser machine and therefore probably spent more money on a lesser machine as well. So I really want to extend my thank you to you, sir. I, I really appreciate it. I definitely didn't expect anyone to really give any more than a quick answer. You know, that's kind of how social media works. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Matt must have posted so many links to different PCs and then I would see him an hour or two later and then I would miss the deal. Um, and then he gave me some other advice about benchmarks and CPUs and stuff like that. I deal in business line stuff and I have been for like 25 years. So the stuff as far as computing hardware that I look at, it's actually kind of boring. You know, it's switches, servers, desktops, whatever. But uh, he knows his gaming PCs and uh, this thing rendered this video. This video that you're watching, I'm sure it rendered just as fast. But I've already rendered it, like I said, and it did it in under 10 minutes. This same video with HD footage, DVR talking desk stuff would have taken me on my old machine it would have taken me at least four to five hours i i think at least four to five hours maybe even six so i am pretty excited about the pc that i've got i thank you again mr matt s and i can't wait to do more editing because it's going to make it so much more easier I, I can actually render it take a short break come back to it watch it back instead of waiting an entire day before I even watch it back to make sure it rendered okay. So I really appreciate that. This is definitely going to speed up my workflow. Uh, great buy. Good advice. Thank you very much. Of course, because it's easiest for me, I am going to start off with the inside flight. Uh, when it comes to whoop performance, if you're not well acclimated, you know, the lower the weight, the larger the surface area, the better performance. That's just kind of how it goes. Uh, of course, when you add HD, you get the great HD recording, but of course, performance sags in one way or another, either pure flight performance or it sags in lack of control or flight time. So if you compare this to something that does not have an HD camera in it, and you'll say, oh, this flies so much faster or more aggressive, what have you, that's normal. Uh, you're, you're sacrificing performance to get the HD recording. And uh, when we get back to the desk, we'll take the canopy off. We'll take a quick look at that camera. I think this has probably been around a while. I don't know what happened if it got lost in shipping or if maybe it got returned and they shipped a second one. I don't know. I think this has been out over a month, maybe even eight weeks. I'm not certain. You guys tell me. You guys follow these things. It seems like a lot closer. Um, maybe I got too many things, too many irons in the fire. But I, I felt as though if you have the right skill set, of course, you can fly it anywhere you want. You can fly anything anywhere you want. So what I would say to beginners is be careful about expecting to be able to buy this quad and fly it this way in your home right away. 
I've been flying since 2015. I've been flying in my house most of that time. Maybe, maybe I didn't the first year and a half or something like that. It's hard for me to remember, but I've been flying inside the house for several years and I fly a lot of whoops, whether they're 2S or 40 millimeter props or larger props even, you know, really, we've gotten some really high performance indoor quads and I've tried to fly uh, just about all of them in the house. Not all the time, if they get too heavy, uh, I gotta be careful about the trinkets and knickknacks that we have around the house. Can't cause any damage, but when they're relatively light, I'll go ahead and take them for a spin. But good fun, I thought the image quality looks good. Of course, you might see some of that banding around some of our, some of our LED lights. You could change the camera settings uh, on the hertz on that to 50 to 60 hertz, and that can get rid of some of that banding from the LEDs, but you've got to solder on a pigtail to do that. This is our outside flight, and you can see that tree, it's wiggling around a little bit. Yeah, we still got some wind. I flew it for eight days outside. I trade eight different days. Our wind hasn't actually been terrible, uh, but still, even when you're in the single digits, when you have something that only weighs, you know, about 30 plus grams, or just right around that 30 to, 35 gram marker and you have all these flat surfaces on it wind has an impact and you'll see it on this uh, I chose this flight because this was actually the best as far as the wind goes uh, I guess it's the best because it didn't crash as much because when I try to fly like I want to fly like I like to do close proximity when I'm flying whoops outside so I spend a lot of time flying around the swing set and in and out of stuff the, the chairs and whatnot uh, but when you have that breeze it shoves you off your line so easily and then when you didn't have much margin for error anyways you end up crashing a bunch uh, of course i'll have one more flight that i'll show in a picture in picture that flight will be more of a cruising sort of flight indoor flight the flight time doesn't change that much oddly enough uh, again keep in mind the batteries i was running they are not the stock batteries i was running the tiny whoop 333 and the and the uh, gnb 350 milliamp battery. I'm running those two batteries exclusively. I did not fly the beta FPV batteries. And the flight time didn't change that much. If I was flying inside, I got about 215, maybe 222, something right around there. And I got about the same outside as well. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Your flight time isn't going to be real long. Of course it is 1S, so I don't think you could do 1S flight in a 31 millimeter prop and expect uh, to get good flight time with an HD or to get longer flight time with an HD. So your scope needs to be uh, more limited as far as how much flight time you're going to get. But I think it's all reasonable. It's your, your priority is you want the HD footage. So you need to take a look at this footage and see what you think of it. Of course, it's a, uh, a winter day, but it's not terrible cold. I think I might even be out there in shorts, maybe just sweats, not certain about that. But our flight is getting ready to come to an end here. I'm gonna make another pass over the pergola because I always like that sound that it makes. And then we're gonna sweep back in around the cattails over here and we'll be done with our flight. Again, this flight is about the same. It's around right around 215 to 220, somewhere in there. Uh, the timeline should be able to tell you how long exactly the flight was. Something else to keep in mind is this is your FPV view. So you've got a 25 milliwatt VTX, regardless of what the tables tell you, but this is what it looks like when you're in the goggles. And this is common for these sort of cameras where you have one camera lens and sensor that's doing two different jobs. You know, it's recording onto the board that's inside the quad, as well as submitting that Im image over the uh, airwaves for our FPV signal. These just have never been very good. The best you can do is actually having two cameras like in the Tarsier or the hybrids from Runcam. Those are really the best you can do for getting a single, so to speak, camera and getting an HD recording with a good FPV view. But I think it's always important to remind everybody when you're looking at these quads, this is what you see in the goggles. All right, we got it apart here. I'm not going to tear it completely down because this has been around. I suspect you've probably already seen a full teardown. I, I think we want to raise this antenna. Either take your soldering iron and poke a hole in some portion of it up here and then bring this antenna through there. Or you can go right underneath the canopy and just kind of have it outside like this. You could run your antenna out here just like so. And even that would be better than being inside the canopy and so close to the other components. But we're here to look at the board. So this is a look at the board. The button down here, where'd the button go as I get everything? There's our microphone. And you do have audio. I'm not going to play it. The, the audio on these is, is hard to listen to. Micro motors make a really high-pitched noise like a drill. Because a drill is a micro motor as well. Uh, unless it's pneumatic. And they might use a different sort of... Anyways... Micromotors don't sound good, and so the, the audio, I don't think you should 
expect that to um, be something you want to use in any sort of footage you want to release to someone else to be used. The audio that you heard in mine is not from this microphone. It is from a secondary cell phone sitting on the table near me. So that's the audio that you hear as you're flying. That's not the audio from the quad. It does record audio, though. If you can do some magic with audio, you know, maybe that's of use to you. Uh, the button right down here. I did not find that my button worked. Uh, starting and stopping, it did nothing. So thankfully, that didn't really matter for review purposes as it was set and most of these cameras are set this way, to record automatically. So when the battery's plugged in, if you've got an SD card in, it starts to record, and you see it on screen, as I showed you in the OSD. And then when you unplug the battery, it saves the recording. You lose the last second or two, maybe two and a half seconds. Um, but, you know, by the time you've walked over the quad after landing or crashing, I don't think there's any footage there you want. So uh, the button not working isn't a big deal, but it is part of my experience. We've got soft mounting all down through here. Uh, I don't really get too concerned about that coming in contact with the other board uh, because there is enough space in there, and we, we're not going to be made, we're not going to be making contact down with any components because these are all supported by exterior screws. So even if we crash here, it's not going to be hitting this and then hitting down on here. It's just not that close. Um, getting this camera in and out is a bit of a pain. I've done this before. Uh, so it's one of those operations that takes a bit of patience and time. So if you have to swap out cameras, um, note that this camera isn't your typical size for an HD camera. They shrunk the housing down uh, to get the weight down, of course. So if you buy this and the camera quits for some reason, you have a crash, it goes into water, what have you, uh, you're going to need to buy another camera from Beta FPV. I do not believe Caddx carries it, but I think Caddx makes it. Let me get these two screws back in. Uh, I guess it's something I could talk about while I do the screws is there's only two screws. Now, typically, when we have a canopy that only has two screws in it, we have problems with jello and vibration. I did not, uh, or at least I don't think I did. You tell me if I'm wrong in that. To go back and look at that footage. Maybe you've already left a comment down below about the jello that you saw. I did not notice it, and I have recently gotten a new computer to where I can actually play high definition footage in full screen. So I am rocking and ready to go with all the HD videos so I can see them better. I'm pretty stoked about that. It's been uh, finally something I just decided I needed to do. I wanted to take this little screenshot of the VTX tables. I was a little bit surprised that these even worked because I thought if you had the power levels off, that it didn't work. Maybe it works because it's manually set up here. No, that's the last band that, and channel that I was using. So, guys, if I, I thought this didn't work if you didn't have the power level set correctly. Uh, I didn't have any troubles manipulating my channel. Of course, it says 25 milliwatts on their product page. Of course, in here they've got 500. I'm certain it's not 500. Uh, this thing would be scorching hot just sitting here onto my bench with my USB plugged in. Also, uh, note the Betaflight version 4.2.0. And then when we go over here to the PIDs, these are the PIDs, Throttle Boost, anything you want to take a look at. If you want to know my rates, there are my rates. So you can use those if you want. I've got somewhat high rates. Some people say they're really high. Some people say they're not high enough. So uh, these are the rates I've been using for years. I'm comfortable with them and I like them. Price. Price is always an important factor. And right now I see on the website, this is $149.99 if you select the FRSky FCZ version. Of course, they have FRSky LBT and Futaba as well. And it flies nice. You know, you just have to know what you're getting into. Uh, and so you should have your expectations set accordingly. Uh, is it in your budget? Is it not? That's something for you to decide. Does it fly the way you want it to fly? Does it get the footage that you want it to get? That, those are all decisions that hopefully that the video has helped you answer. And if it didn't answer those questions, hopefully I've provided you with a little bit of entertainment or at least something to do for a few minutes. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.